Hello guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's video is While I Was Out. I think this is the eighth episode of my series. This is a series where I showcase looks that I have done off camera. I didn't have time to film them, but I want to share them with you. I have a whole While I Was Out playlist. It's linked above. It's also linked down below in the description box. So let's get going with this video. Before we get into this, I did film today's eyeshadow look and I'll link it down below for you if you're curious. There were several palettes featured in these looks, which were part of my recent, you know, am I going to declutter video. I've been thinking about decluttering them, but I wanted to particularly use them again and see if I could decide. So several, if not all of those palettes will be featured in today's video. And I'm going to number these looks in case you want to tell me what your favorite ones are. I always love hearing from you guys. Once in a while, I will recreate a look that's featured in one of these videos, but I have a lot of ideas and honestly more ideas than I have time to film. So I never make promises that I will recreate a look, but if something is highly requested, I just might. Let's start with look number one. So for this look, I used the Dark Fantasy palette from Beauty Bay. I also had my palette pull-in, which at the time, I think for this entire video, my palette pull-in is always the Nomad Paradise Islands palette. I used the ColourPop Creme Gel Liner in the shade Crystal Crush to line my waterline, but also do my entire lower lash line. I dragged that shade from the waterline into the lash line, and then I sort of buffed it out a little bit. So that's how I got this very, very vibrant blue lower lash line, even though I was using the Dark Fantasy palette. On my lips, I used the ColourPop Glowing Lip in the shade Candy Kisses, and then I topped it with this green-tinted lip gloss. This is the NYX This Is Milky Lip Gloss. It's such a weird name. This Is Milky Lip Gloss in the shade Mint Choco Chip. I wanted a lighter look on this day, and I picked the Dark Fantasy palette because I, I was, again, trying to decide if, if I like it enough to keep it. I'm not sure if I really achieved a lighter look, but I think overall it is quite pretty. The silver shimmer in this palette is great. And then the palette Poland was a blue shimmer. Now overall, the blue tones of this look are kind of a dangerous undertone on me. It depends on where I place them, how much I use, and what I pair them with, but I think that this was successful. And when I showed this look to a friend of mine, she was surprised that it was dark fantasy, but it is a pretty look overall, and I did enjoy the final result, and the palette works very nicely. So this was one voted in favor of keeping dark fantasy. Okay, so here is the first time that you guys are seeing, unless you follow me on Instagram, a very, very dark lip. Let me tell you what's going on here. I used the Earthy 42 from Beauty Bay, and I did use Dark Fantasy as well. I put white in my waterline, and on my lips I'm wearing the NYX Butter Gloss in the shade Cinnamon Roll. So for this look, I was trying to recreate the look that Angelica did using the Unearthly Devour palette, which, by the way, looks a lot like the Dark Fantasy palette. I see major similarities between those two palettes. Although I think the Unearthly, as far as the, the background colors, that lovely, deep, rich, gradiated burgundy, oh, so pretty. I think that the packaging of Unearthly looks a little bit more luxe, honestly, but Dark Fantasy has a larger color story. Also, the Unearthly has a couple way more exciting shimmers. I mean, they have beautiful, beautiful shifts, not quite as dark. I do prefer a lighter shimmer. If I had to choose color story-wise to just have one palette over the other, I would choose the Unearthly, but theme-wise, I'm not interested in most of what they put out, honestly. Anyway, I digress. I wanted to recreate Angie's look, and for her look, she used what was, I think, a super deep purple or brown lip color. I didn't have anything like that. So what I did was I took my darkest brown butter gloss, which is the cinnamon roll shade, and then I took the black matte shadow from the Dark Fantasy palette and I tapped it on top. So I tried to get a really, really dark lip, but that's why it's kind of streaky and a bit transparent. It's not opaque because it was actually eyeshadow just tapped onto a lip gloss. After this video, I added black in my outer corner because I thought it wasn't quite deep enough. The, the eye look itself I thought was really, really pretty. The wing I did was decent. You know, sometimes you do a good wing, sometimes you don't. <laughs> I did enjoy the drama of the dark lip, but I knew that I wasn't executing it well because I didn't have the right product. I mean, it was streaky and thin and just looked kind of patchy and not nice at all. I wiped it off immediately afterwards, but I wanted to play and I wanted to see if I could get this kind of result with a slightly better product, which leads me into look number three. For look number three, I used the Aura palette from Ace Beauté, which is new to my collection. By this time, I had bought the black NYX Butter Gloss. The shade is called Licorice. And I also used white in my waterline, as I did before. So for this look, I actually followed Angie's tutorial again for her, um, her video using the Aura palette. So it was Angie's look, except I used the dark, dark lip color. Because, I, again, I wanted to play with that contrast, the feeling of having that deep color on my lips, and just see what it was. And I thought a $5 investment for NYX Butter Gloss would be worth it, you know, just, just to see, just to play. It turns out that I really enjoy the drama of a dark lip, just like I enjoy the drama of dark eyes. 
but for me, not together. Both of these elements, heavy eye makeup and heavy lip makeup, together on me, I just don't feel like myself anymore. I think I could really pull it off. I could go like really vampy and sultry, but it's not me. It's too high maintenance. This is the sort of thing where if you drink, if you eat, if you lick your lips, you're going to get it on your teeth, on your tongue, on your dishes. It's just gross. <laughs> it's too high maintenance overall. I didn't feel comfortable around my daughters. I felt really self-conscious. I knew my husband would hate it. He would absolutely hate it. <laughs> so maybe I'll try, if he's not around, maybe I'll try a dark lip with mascara and a light wash of sparkle or something, but this was too much. So what I did was I wiped off the lips and then this next clip is just the eye look. Let's focus on the eyes. I did really like this eye look. This was my first time using the Aura palette. Again, I followed Angie's video, and I think that these colors are really nice on me. They're kind of purple, kind of pink, kind of in the middle. They're very berry leaning. These are good colors for my undertones. I thought this look was feminine and smoldering, but not too smoky. Also, on my inner corner, you see a white mat. I pulled in a different palette to get that. You can't find a white mat in the Aura palette. I am loving a very light pastel matte inner corner. I think it is so flattering. It really just brightens and softens the inner area without adding texture. It doesn't pick up weird lights from angles or shadows. It doesn't sink into fine lines. It's just a way to brighten and liven and possibly even youthen the inner corner area in a lovely, fetching, flattering, always effective way. I think that at this point I have almost no interest in putting a shimmer on my inner corner unless it's an extremely light toned shimmer and sometimes even now I've been putting a shimmer on top of the matte because the matte brightens the area and then the shimmer might bring a, a hint of sparkle but still have the effect of the matte all around it. I'm loving a pastel matte inner corner. It's great. Look number four was using the Flora Story palette from Udin's Eye. I put black in my waterline and on my lips I'm wearing the Burt's Bees tinted lip oil. The shade is called Showering Sunset. I felt that this look was soft, easy, quick, and pretty. I didn't have a lot of time to do it. This was a homeschool day at our co-op, and it was just a very quiet, nice, soft, flattering sort of look. Flora Story is one of the palettes which was featured in my recent, you know, am I gonna get rid of it video. I, I still haven't decided. I have used it a few times since this look. I think I just need to change my expectations of the palette. It's not gonna give me very bright or loud or bold or even highly highly contrasted looks. It's going to give me softer, quieter sorts of things. But if that's what I'm going for, it does that well. So maybe I just need to change my expectations of the palette that when I want something quiet and soft, just like I would grab the Muse palette from Cosmic Brushes, I can grab Flora Story and get those more demure looks and yet still in great quality. Here is look number five. This is the first time using the America's Parks palette from Nomad. I had my eye on this palette for some time and a friend of mine gave it to me because she's so sweet. She tricked me too. She tricked me and convinced me to give her my address and then she had it mailed to me. <laughs> this is, like I said, my first time using the palette. I had a black in my waterline and on my lips I'm wearing the NYX uh, Glowing Lip in the shade Desert Aura. The America's Parks palette is pretty neutral heavy with fun pops of color. So most of the looks that you're gonna get from it are gonna be leaning neutral. This, of course, mostly neutral. I did grab the yellow and the green to just spice it up a little bit. It's an extremely easy palette to work with. The formula's nice, the shimmers are soft and, and sparkly. Nothing crazy, nothing really wet or emollient, but still very much there. It's probably quite beginner friendly and I am excited to see what kinds of colorful looks I can get out of this palette. But it's nice to have as an option for neutral looks too. For this look, I used the Envy palette from Ace Beauté. In my waterline, I used Extra Frosting from ColourPop, and my lips are featuring the This Is Milky Gloss in the color Mint Choco Chip. Again, it's sort of green-leaning sort of gloss. It does not look green on the lips. This is the sister palette to the Aura from Ace Beauté, and this is my first time using Envy. They are such, such pretty greens. I didn't really have a plan. I just threw on whatever was jumping out to me at that time. I used the lighter blue shimmer and it actually looked a lot more green when I paired it with greens. So I'm excited to try that shimmer with the blues in the palette to see how far it can lean more in the blue direction as opposed to green. It is a great formula and it was really fun to play with this. I Again, I like the look overall. I probably could have blended it a bit better. Sometimes I, I think that the um, the shape of my eyebrow distorts the way that I blend, so sometimes I, I don't quite fill that space as evenly as I ought to. You know, we learn as we go, we finesse, we practice, we build our skills. But I think the eye look was pretty. <laughs> Here is the seventh look for today's video. For this look, I used the La Cienega palette from Adept Cosmetics. I put black in my waterline, and on my lips I'm wearing the NYX Butter Gloss, and the shade is Cranberry Pie. This was for a wedding. I was singing at a wedding later in the evening, and I wanted to do something that highlighted the eyes, but did so in 
a classier white, you know, not quite colorful or really, really bold, but a bit of smoke, a bit of drama. It was an evening wedding. So I opted to do a simple smoky eye with the mattes and then put that burgundy shimmer on top. This is a very reliable palette. It gives you exactly what you would expect. If I were to critique it at all, I would say that perhaps the shimmer options are too shimmery. <laughs> and I can't believe that I'm saying that, but honestly, when it came to using this palette for a moody or smoky eye with a bit of shimmer, my only shimmer option was the burgundy. I'm not complaining. This is what the palette offers. It's beautiful, it's fun, and I could have chosen any of 40 different palettes to just pull in a shimmer. It's just that because the mattes of the La Cienega palette are so standard, if you want a more standard shimmer, you're not really going to get it from the palette. So that's, that's all I'm saying. But the look was pretty. It did exactly what I wanted it to do. And I liked the burgundy shimmer because it was just a hint of color, a little bit of purple sparkle, but still pretty, pretty chill overall. And finally, we're going to end today's video with America's Parks again from Nomad. I used black in the waterline, and on my lips I'm wearing the ColourPop lip oil. The color is called Hot Spark. Again, I brought in a different palette to do a white inner corner matte highlight. For this look, I also changed it up a bit. I did kind of standard crease work without much depth in the outer corner, and then I used a shimmer all over the lid. I don't usually do that. I used some lighter mattes on the lower lash line. Again, this was very quick and easy, extremely work appropriate. Sometimes we want to go for something that's more wearable for every day or for working in an office or a bank or something where you might not be allowed to wear very bold and bright colorful makeup. This is a nice palette. It gives you the quieter, softer options, but still good quality, pretty shimmer. This is, again, a very comfortable, easy to use palette. It is quite beginner friendly. I think the, the formula is nice. The, the mattes blend out easily and well, and they can build, they can buff. You could just go really soft. You could get a bit more drama. It could use one more dark matte. I think that the palette, like all of my, you know, neutrals with a twist sort of palettes that I featured recently in my Twisted Neutrals video, this sort of palette is, it's color for a neutral lover. You know, it's a lot of neutral shades with some color thrown in there, but the colors work well with the neutrals. It is colorful enough to interest a color lover, but neutral enough to interest a neutral lover. And overall, I think it's a cute palette. So that finishes off my most recent looks off camera. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Do remember to check the description box for my While I Was Out playlist. I believe this is the eighth in the series, so there are seven others if you want to see uh, eight to ten looks per video. I enjoyed this series and I hope you do too. Thank you so much for being here today, for giving me your time. I hope you'll consider liking and subscribing before you go, and I'll see you again in my next video. Bye!